All right, from this to this. Welcome back. Today we're going to talk about ways of manipulating light using collapsible, portable things that are lightweight without using actual lights. And this is the way Hollywood does it when they cannot lug big heavy lights out in the middle of nowhere like this. So in this situation, you can see she's got bright light on this side and she's got harsh shadows on this side, which is not very flattering. So how do we give her Hollywood lighting out in the middle of nowhere with very little stuff? And I'm not just talking about putting a reflector on her face. I'm talking about really nice glamour lighting without using big heavy lights. So here we go. The first thing that I would do if I was a director of photography on a Hollywood movie or a key grip, I would look at her and say, all right, get me a four by four black floppy and put it behind her on camera left. Now you're going to go, what the hell's a black floppy? <laughs> well, I'll show you. Now, I did a video on flags a little while ago. I'm sure you remember that. This side blocks the light, and this side absorbs the light. Normally, if you're holding like a, a hard card, like a piece of foam core or something, this side would actually be reflecting light back onto her, which we don't want. What I want to do is totally knock out the light completely so there's no light bouncing onto her, and I want to start from a clean slate of no lighting at all, and that's what these things are good for. The reason I call it a floppy is there's a Velcro part that drapes down and sticks up there. So now it's twice as big. And now this is also really good if the sun is overhead. So now you can see we have a roof over our head and a wall. So now I have a nice non-lit area that I can put light in however I want. And this is really important when you want to have really nice glamour lighting. So the first step is to take all the light away. That's the first step. The second step is put light in at your own controls. And the other good thing about this is things like this. In a hot day, like when you're out in the desert like this, it helps shade the model so she doesn't like roast on you. Anyway, this is what Hollywood uses. This is by Matthews. It's not very practical for a photographer who wants to carry his own stuff. He's got no assistance. He wants lightweight stuff and he doesn't have a lot of money. Now I'm going to show you today how you can get the same effect using non-Hollywood equipment that's made for private photographers, which weighs very little. It's portable, it's collapsible, and you can take it with you and it doesn't cost very much. All right. So I brought all kinds of options today for you to consider. Actually, the heaviest thing of all of all of these is the light stand. All right, so this is where you start. Out in the bright sunlight, harsh lighting on your face, sh harsh shadows, not very good lighting. Okay, so now we have to block the sun from causing that harsh look. So let's put the black up. Okay, so now for the lighting, I'm going to use a Godox AD300 portable flash. She's totally in shade. I'm going to add light with this thing. Wow. Oh, you're going to like these. That orange looks great. But let's say you don't want to use a strobe. So what do you use? A reflector or a diffuser? Well, depends on where the sun is and which direction you're shooting. And that has a lot to do with the background. For example, let's say you want to have these nice mountains. So you have to shoot in this direction instead of that direction. That will determine more whether you use diffusion or reflection. So if the sun is behind her, then you use a reflector. If the sun is in front of her, then you use diffusion, which diffuses the light and makes it soft. But what if the light's coming from the side as it is now, where you have a harsh light on one side and a harsh shadow on the other? Well, you could just put a diffuser on one side, but you still got the shadow on the other side. Now you could have a diffuser on this side and a reflector on this side, or just a reflector to help cancel out the shadows. But you're blinding the girl. And now she's got twice as much light on her face as if the sun isn't bright enough. Now it's hitting her from two sides. So if you're getting light from the side, I suggest using a cutter either way, the black side. So you're shading out everything and now you have a clean slate to work with. In which case you then just put a reflector on this side 
and preferably a white one. Okay, so let's start with diffusers. You could use something like this. This is a pop open by Last Light. You can hold it with one hand while you're taking pictures. Here's a cute little one by Glow. It's a 22 inch five in one reflector kit. Probably costs like 20, 30 bucks. It's really cute. It has a, a silver and gold. So it's not totally silver. It's not really gold. It warms up a little bit. So your face is a little warmed up uh, from the sun. It has, a z it has black on the other side. So you can use it as a, something to shade the light, which is great. It has a zipper on it. And inside here, we have a diffuser. So now we can diffuse the light, which is really good. It's a cute little thing. It's kind of small. Um, but this is something that... This is the difference between an amateur and a professional. Amateurs like to use just enough to cover the person. Now that's good with reflectors because a reflector, you just have to put light on the person and that's it. But a diffuser, the general rule I found is the bigger the diffuser, the softer the light. The reflectors are just really harsh and that's just basically parallel lines. But diffusers shoot light in all directions and... The best lighting for glamour is when you have light coming from all sides. You have like light hitting you from this side and this side, not just the front. And when you have a big giant diffuser like this, you know, a big one, five feet, six feet wide, now you have bright light coming at you from this side and this side instead of just the front. That's why in Hollywood, they, whenever you see Hollywood sets, they have these big giant diffusers everywhere, big giant frames. That's why, because the bigger the light source, the more flattering and better you look instead of just a little thing like this. Now, if you're in a crunch, if, you know, if you're hiking and you, know, you just want to get something, just a little thing, these things are great. I mean, it works. I mean, it's good for just a little, you know, just to have something. It's better to have something than nothing. But if you have a choice, if you're able to do it, uh, reflectors don't have to be big, but diffusers, the bigger the better. This right here is a 78 by 78 frame, which is over six feet by six feet. It's by Lastalite. It costs about $200. It weighs almost nothing. It's really lightweight and it goes together really fast. It has elastic cords inside, so it always stays together. This is bigger than me. So the frame is $200. And then you put something inside it, either a diffuser or a reflector. And it stretches really tight. So this is a diffuser. It's a 0.75 strength diffuser. All right, so here it is mounted and the sun's coming through here, putting soft light on my face. All right, this is a 0.75 diffuser. That's three quarters of a stop, which isn't very much when it comes to diffusion. The sun's still coming through pretty harshly. It softens it somewhat. But for me, it's not enough. I just wanted to show you what it looks like. All right, this is supposed to be a 1.25 <laughs> diffuser. I think it's more like a three-stop fuser. There's no way that last one was three-quarters of a stop. And this is one and a quarter stop. This is like blocking the sun almost completely. So when you adjust for it, this is what you see. So it's obviously diffused. But look at the background. It's all blown out. You don't even see the background anymore. So this is too much diffusion. Even though it's nice and soft, it's too much. All right, now this is with two light stands. If you only have one, that's okay. You could just mount the single light stand in the middle and it's these things don't weigh much, so you can just support it with one if you want. There's enough diffuse light so that shadow won't show up. This is a five by five last light frame. It costs about $137. And here I have the bar across the back. And the other cool thing about this bar is you can turn this thing so it's like this. If the sun is directly overhead, you could have this thing as a, a sunshade or a diffuser from above. Because right now the sun is like right there. So this thing is diffusing from above, which is great. I mean, that's what this bar is really good for. And you only need one light stand, which is really good. Well, this is a three and a half by six and a half. This is a really great size for when you're doing things sideways like this. For like mounting black nets and stuff. Anyway, let's say you want to stand this thing up and you don't have any light stands. No problem. What you do is you take this crossbar, the middle thing, and you just put it like this, and then you turn this thing around so it's facing the other way, and you just put a rock on it. There. Now I have a taller than me uh, frame. Just hop through it. And I can put diffusion in here, reflection, and I've got this thing holding it up without any light stands. You, for more stability, you can get a second one. This is great. It's like an erector set. 
it weighs nothing. It's really lightweight aluminum. But if this still is still too big and bulky and awkward and expensive for you, I've got something else for you. A big, giant, very big, <laughs> cheap white diffuser. These things don't cost much, but look how big this thing is. This is huge. And it has great diffusion. It has great diffusion. So that's good. And things like this, they're like, they're under 50 bucks. Here's another one. This one here is a 40 by 60. So this is the frame. This is the actual frame. So right now I've got a diffuser. Okay, that, that's a, this diffuses the light. <clears throat> but you use this frame to put around it either gold or white reflector or black. One of the easiest ways to mount it to a light stand if you don't have a grip head is one of these things. This is a clamp that's attached to a uh, thing you put on a light stand and there you go you've got a diffuser a black a silver a reflector whatever you want if you don't want to have the pole running through the middle you could use this thing this thing is an arm that has clamps attached to it and a counterweight it telescopes out for as <laughs> quite a ways actually like that's ridiculous you don't need it that big. so here now you don't have the uh the rod running through the middle of it. Another way to hold something like this, the expandable things, because they have like a, a flat wire running around the edge. Instead of a clamp, you use one of these things. These are really small and portable and light. They have like a, what do you call it? Uh, a little spring-loaded thingy that you just clamp on there. And then this goes on a light stand. So that's a real simple way. This is really lightweight and small. And these are called collapsible reflector holders by Impact and get them at B and H. They don't cost much. You can also make your own frame using half inch aluminum rods, which weigh nothing. And you get these corner pieces like this. And you use Allen wrenches to make them uh, connected like that. So you can make your own frame. This is really easy, really cheap. You get these corners and the rods if you want at modern studio equipment. That's another nice portable way of getting a frame. Now here's one of my favorites. This is a Favitech Studio Pro 4x4. Now you can get 4x4s from different companies, but this is my favorite one. It comes with a frame, a silver, which has white on the other side, and a diffuser, and this pole, which I'll get to in a minute. Check this out. This is how fast this thing opens up. And there you go. It's stretched. It's ready to go. You got white on this side, silver on this side. It's ridiculous how long this pole is. I'm sure you can think of a lot of uses for something this long. And now you can have it like uh, at 90 degrees, like that. So this, now it's, you can have somebody holding this, or you could walk around like you can, you can be walking with somebody while while they're talking. You can use it like a normal light stand, however tall you want it. So. I never use the pole, but it comes with it, which is, the thing's 150 bucks for all of this. I love the 4x4 size. It's the best size. It's the most practical size. These things are so easy to close. There's a button here on each side. You just push them in, and that's it. Folds up right away, and then when you want to have them open, yeah, they're open. Look how easy that is. You don't need to put expensive stuff in these frames. Usually when you buy a pre-made diffuser or reflector it's like a hundred bucks just for what goes inside the frame but you can take like this this plastic sheeting here which i got at home depot i suggest six mil get some of these cheap plastic little clamps also at home depot or amazon or you can use a bed sheet the lower the thread count the better so this is with the cheap plastic sheeting <laughs> coming through. You could use that as a diffuser. And like I said, you could double it up if you want more diffusion. But how cheap is this? I mean, in a pinch, you could use bed sheets, plastic sheeting, anything for diffusion. All right, so that was diffusers. Let's get on to reflectors. I personally like reflectors over diffusers. The first thing I try to do is always get her in shade. And if there's no shade, like a tree or anything, then I just basically have her face away from the sun, which is really good because now you have a nice glow around her hair from the sun from the back. That's always a nice thing to have when you're trying to do glamorous stuff. And then you just fill in the face with a reflector. Where's the sun? There we go. Now the thing about shiny reflectors is they're really bright and uh, 
they blind you. So it's better to have a white reflector like this. Favitech, this is a really nice one. It's four by four, it's collapsible. And the white side has like a shine to it. So it's white, but it has a little bit of shine to it, not much, but it's just enough to create a nice glamour look. One common mistake that almost everybody does in the beginning when they use reflectors is they always hold the reflector down here like this. And this is not good because it gives you monster lighting. This is not natural, it's creepy looking. Light usually comes from above. That's where the sky is, that's where the lights are in your room. So we're used to seeing light coming from above. This is a lot more natural. So that's something to keep in mind. You have light down here, is, this is fill light. So if you're gonna have fill light, this is your secondary light. It should be like a white card, not a silver thing. But this is not as important as the thing that comes from above. Your key light, your main light should always come from above. Keep that in mind. All right, so now I have some diffusion on my face, but notice how dark my face looks and how bright the background looks. So what you wanna do in this case is, you, to, make, to really make it look good, is you either gotta darken the background or brighten the foreground even more. And I don't wanna be blinded even more, so let's try to darken the background. All right, so this is the Westcott Scrim Gym 4x6. It comes in different sizes. The 4x6 for me is the perfect proportion for a background, 16x9 background. Um, so this is what I'm going to be using to make my darker background. And what I'm going to use for that is, and I made a video about this, the, uh, the, remember the fly screen video? It's called a scrim. That's the professional term. What it is, is it's a net. It's kind of like fly screen, but this is the professional version of it. This is what Hollywood uses. And this particular setup has Velcro. So the, uh, just put it on here and it's real easy to apply. All right, so I've got this thing up on a stand here. Uh, it's kind of lit up a little bit on the side. You can see the shade here. But I'm gonna have it lit from the front just so you can see what it looks like when the sun hits it from the front. Anyway, so this is uh, the idea of the black net. Now, I'm about two feet from in front of this thing and you can probably see the pattern of the net. This is the problem with these things. It's a quite pronounced texture. I gotta get a lot closer for the background to get out of focus. There's a reason these holes are as big as they are. It allows the wind to go through so it doesn't come a sail. The downside of it is you see the texture. And now the only way to get that softened is you need to have it further back. So that goes out of focus. That means you need a bigger frame. I'm going to show you a finer mesh fabric, which means you need a smaller frame. All right, this is the Marcus Cheaper and Better Way. Remember the little 4x4 Favitech that I was telling you about? This really lightweight aluminum frame. Well, what I did is I took a couple of these and I chopped it here and here. And I got an extension piece and put it in. So instead of 4x4, four four, it's actually 43 inches by 43 inches. And... I made this. Check this out. Isn't this cool? So this used to be a square, 43 inches by 43 inches. You can see the cut mark right there and right there. So this little piece right here was added in and it made it wider. And it's really lightweight, it weighs nothing. And then I got some 5 8 inch uh, baby pin receivers and I stuck them on the bottom here. So all I need is a couple of uh, little light stands, lightweight light stands, to hold it up. And here's what I'm going to stretch over. And you remember this from the, the um, fly screen video. You go to the fabric store and you buy this really lightweight stuff called chiffon. It's a really, really delicate fabric. And the, the mesh, the weave, is so fine, you can't even see it hardly. It's like... <laughs> It's definitely not like fly screen. This is such a delicate weave that um, you don't even see the pattern with the camera. So I just got a couple little lightweight six foot impact stands. They weigh nothing, they're really, really lightweight. And I just put one on each of these things. And normally when you have a frame, you need two people to put it together. Uh, but this is so lightweight one person can definitely do this using these really cheap little lightweight plastic 
clamps from Home Depot. I got a whole bag of them for like three bucks or something. This was the Marcus way of doing it. All right, so I just stretched this thing. You can see a wrinkle here and a wrinkle here and some billowing from the breeze. But that, the only reason you see that is because the sun is right there and it's hitting it from the side. All you have to do is turn this thing so it's in shade. Now it's still getting hit a bit from the sun, but I, and I can shade it even more. But look at the difference right away. The first thing you notice is this is a smaller frame, but it's probably already out of focus. I'm the same distance as I was from the last one, but it's probably a lot softer looking now. That's because it's a finer mesh and it's just, I love this just so much more. It's cheaper, it's lighter. This fabric costs six bucks. That huge professional thing, the same size, costs like a hundred bucks. All right, so now I have a five by five with a 0.75, that's a three quarters of a stop diffuser on her face. And you can see she's still got shadow on this side. Yeah, the light's softer on this side, but I'd rather have a reflector. So let's put up a black on this side and a reflector on this side. All right, so remember the main reflector should be above eye level, which you can see it is right here. I know you see black, that's because the back side is black, the front side is white. And we're using a reflector here to block her light. Although this is a white side, it's still causing shade on her. It's much better than, uh, here, check it out. This is, see, that's without it, that's with it. So even a white reflector can create shade in a pinch when needed. It doesn't have to be totally black. And it adds a little bit of fill light, just a little bit, because the light, the main key light's coming from this side. So this adds maybe a tiny bit of fill, not much. So here you can see white reflector, five by five, lights blocked from this side. And here you can see how much this chiffon is darkening the background. So some people say, well, why don't you just use an ND filter? Well, then you'd be darkening everything, including her face. You only want to darken the background, not the foreground. When you see Hollywood sets and you see all these big things on stands like this, this is what they're doing. They're basically just taking sunlight, blocking it, reflecting it, or darkening it. That's basically all they're doing. And they're being creative with existing light. They're not using big, heavy electric lights. If you don't want a big, bulky thing like this, you want a smaller one, a 4x4 will do just fine also. All right, so now I'm using a 4x4 up here with the white, it's just the white. It still does pretty good. You can also use two of these, so one on each side. Let's do that real quick. All right, so now I have two 4x4s, one on each side, so she has light coming from this side and this side, so she has nice lighting coming from all directions. The chiffon is totally backlit by the sun now. This is not in shade, so it's going to give the background a little bit of a hazy look, like there's a slight haze or fog, but I still think it looks kind of okay as long as it's out of focus. Anyway, and you got the light hitting her from the back. The sun is hitting her hair, making it look really good. And you have nice soft light coming from each side. Really nice glamour look with two little portable 4x4s. The only thing left that I would do to this would add a little bit of fill from below. That's it. Just a tiny bit of white fill. And, uh, and there's your glamour shot. And the cool thing about this frame, it collapses down to that. And it weighs nothing. How cool is that? And it's cheap. I love it. All right, so I took the black away completely. And now all I have is the background, the, the uh, chiffon, the scrim, and one 4x4 white reflector. That's all I have. And uh, I, we're facing her totally away from the sun, which means we don't need the black anymore. And you can see how the sun is backlighting her hair beautifully. And the light from her face is coming from the reflector. So yes, you can light up really nicely with just a 4x4 reflector, and that one breaks down really easily to a small, very portable size. So I like the 4x4 the best, personally. It's just small and, and uh, just easy to use. Nice glamour lighting with just one little 4x4. Now this is one, and the little 4x4 is actually better when the sun is directly behind the model, and it's aiming right at the 4x4 and it's bouncing right back. If the light was from the side, that's when the 4x4 would probably be too weak. Because then you're hitting it at 45 degrees or 90 degrees. <laughs> but uh, when the light is directly hitting the white reflector and right back into her face, that's when you get a nice smooth lighting. So let's put two 4x4s in, one on each side. All right, so let's take some pictures using the background scrim 
in two 4x4 reflectors <laughs> using a GM1, the Lumix GM1. This is about as far as you can get from a Hollywood camera. But I want to show you how you can get really nice Hollywood glamour look with even cheap little cameras like this. No strobes, no electric lights. Yeah, that's nice. Oh, that's good. All right. Okay, so this is a silver reflector. I know it looks really cool, but I'm being blinded. I can't open my left eye here. It's too bright. If this thing was further away... All right, so that's about 15 feet further back. So it's not as bright. I can open my eye now. It's not as bad, but it's still kind of blinding me. All right, so this is 20... 25 feet back. It's still very bright in my eye. It's not as bright on the camera, but it's still kind of annoying for me. It's much better to have a white, a huge white reflector right there in front of me rather than a shiny reflector that's even further away. But sometimes you need to have a reflector further away because it's in the shot. But for the person in the shot, it's not very uh, pleasant. Plus, uh, you get more blown out highlights. So anyway, I'm going to talk about strobes now. We have a model here out in nature, and like I said, when you're using strobes, you don't want to have the background scrim or net because you don't need it. For high-speed sync, I mean, you can make it as dark as you want, and then you got the flash to make the foreground bright. So in this case, when you're using, for video, yes, the scrim is great, but for flash photography, you don't need it. You really don't. I mean, you can make the background as dark as you want. So I'm just going to show you. This is what I do generally when I'm on location shooting portraits out in nature. I generally always try to put the person with, the, like I said, the back, their back, the sun is hitting them from behind and their face is in shade, as you can see she is right now. And all I have to do is fill in the face with the, the, the flash. I'm going to use a Godox AD300. That's all I'm going to use and uh, just fill it right in. Just a basic shot. No black needed. Now, if the sun was from the side, I would need a black to block that out, but I don't because I like to have the, the sun hitting her from behind for the hair. So let's do some shots with a strobe. Nice. Really nice. Wow. Oh, and by the way, the camera I've been filming most of this video with today is a Sony Z90V 4K camcorder with a one inch sensor and three built in ND filters. It's the same one inch sensor that's found in the RX100 Mark 7, but check out the lens. Check out the zoom on this thing. <laughs> this guy is an incredible zoom and big lens. It's great. So, yeah, it's got the same one inch sensor as the Sony RX100 Mark 7. And I love that camera. It's still my favorite camera because it's a little tiny pocket camera. But if you want to shoot videos all day long, like out here in the desert, and you don't want it to overheat or shut down, you might want to consider this because this is the same one inch sensor in a camcorder body, but it no time limit. It won't overheat. It runs all day. It's a Sony Z90V 4K camcorder with a one inch sensor. And for the behind the scenes, I have my favorite little Osmo action camera. It's my favorite little behind the scenes camera because it's the size of an ice cube. It's so small. It's awesome. It's got a front screen. It's so easy to just put in your pocket and take anywhere. I'm going to make a video just about that camera. I like it more than GoPros. It is so wonderfully awesome in so many ways. Osmo action. It's the original one. It's not number two. So that's just an example of the kind of things you can do with portable lighting to block the sun, filter the sun, diffuse the sun, reflect the sun, bounce the sun, or use one of these when you've got the person in shade. So you can create shade out in the middle of a bright sunny middle of nowhere, which is what I'm trying to show you here. You can control the light without a lot of big heavy equipment. Anyway, so I thought that might help. I'll put the links down below for everything. And uh, I just love coming. Any reason to come out here in the sun, nature, I look for any excuse to come out here and do that. With me. With her. I'm so glad I have her. Aww. So, um, okay. Well, I guess we'll see you next week. Have a good one. Bye. Bye.